We nearly control every aspect of our lives, down to a science. Yet, if you've clicked on this video, chances are watercolor is still a bit of a mystery to you. That is why today I'm going to be showing you four steps to help you control watercolor and take a bit of that mystery out of this awesome art form. So let's jump into this. Step number one, paint with light. This may seem like an obvious suggestion, but it's actually one of the most crucial steps for all of watercolor. Not only does a bright natural light help you determine correct color hues, but it also helps you determine when you actually need to lay your paint down on the paper. This is sometimes referred to as that magical moment. It can appear like a sheen on the paper, or you can actually have it look like a dome, such as right here. I recommend using sunlight from a very bright open window, or you can use a natural light fluorescent light. Sometimes I use those too when I'm working at night. The main thing that you're going to want to be looking for when you're using a fluorescent light is a true light setting. Daylight tends to be a little bit warm, which can actually throw your color hues off. And then those cooler LED kind of lights have a bluish tone. So you're looking for something that's more of a true light setting. Step number two, determine where your water is. It may seem self-explanatory, but the best way to control the water in your watercolor is to determine actually where your water source is coming from in the first place. So where is the water coming from? Well, it's actually coming from three places. You will have it coming from a loaded down brush or a puddly palette and also from your paper itself. This is why it's always a good idea to check the amounts of water circulating on these three items. If you have a loaded down brush and a wet palette and a wet and wet combo on your paper, chances are you're not gonna be happy with your results because you're adding too much water at the same time. This means you're gonna have little to no control while you're mixing your paint in that watery mess. Step number three, realize you can't control everything. And I know this might sound strange for a video that is basically focusing on how do you control watercolor. But even with all the suggestions that I've mentioned and some more that I will mention later on, you have to realize watercolor at times will have a mind of its own. Just like life, you may try to plan everything out and prepare for all of the worst case scenarios that are going to happen. And, you know, just sometimes it, life sends you a curveball and so does watercolor and you never expected it. So you just have to kind of work through those curveballs and try and make the best of things in the moment. Now, while curveballs can be stressful and even disastrous at times, sometimes, just sometimes, the unexpected actually has a way of taking us places that we never dreamed. That's why going with the flow and seeing where this crazy bend might take you can actually be a beautiful and even rewarding thing rather than trying to be super obsessive and control every minute detail of everything that you're trying to do. This is one reason why I absolutely love watercolor because I can prepare as much as I want to, but a lot of times it does throw these curveballs at me and it's kind of helped me realize that even in life, um, it's not about these checkpoints of, oh, I did this and I did this and I did this and this is the outcome but rather it's more about the experiences that you have along the way and also the people that you share those experience with. With watercolor, I have learned how to kind of just go with these curveballs and learned from the experiences. And I've really 
found myself recently starting to enjoy when things go amiss. So that is just something that you need to keep in mind. You cannot control watercolor all the time. And finally, step number four, change your perspective. This is another thing that kind of wraps into life, but when you are painting, I don't just mean change your perspective as in thinking, oh, this went wrong, so I need to try and do this right, but actually I'm talking about changing your perspective, actually tilting your head to the side. This will help you determine whether your paper is starting to form that dome shape as I talked about earlier. And when you're starting to hit that dome shape, it means that your paper is actually to the point of being oversaturated with water and it's about to crumble underneath you. But then again, sometimes having a little bit less control can actually be a good thing. There's really no way to know unless you kind of go out on a limb and really test your limits. And that is it for this video. Now I want to hear back from you. What are your favorite watercolor wet and wet techniques? I used a lot with this illustration such as salt and I used gold acrylic and a couple of other things that hopefully I can get into later, but I want to hear your thoughts. What do you like to do when you're adding texture in a wet and wet technique? Make sure to comment down below. And I also want to ask you if you liked this video and you would like for me to teach you how to actually paint this whale, make sure to hit that like button. If we can get to 500 likes before I upload my next video, which is gonna be next Wednesdays, then I will know that you really would like for me to teach this tutorial on how to paint this whale. By using the likes, I'm gonna be able to kind of judge if you're really interested in this style of tutorial or not, and that way I'm not pushing myself and really putting myself out there for something that you really don't want. So please hit that like button if you would really like for me to teach a tutorial, a watercolor tutorial on how to paint this whale on YouTube. That will be coming up if we hit that 500 goal by next week. I will put that in the schedule for the next month basically. So that will be something to look forward to. And also I just wanna say, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, hit that subscribe button. And also there's a new thing on YouTube where you have to smash apparently that little bell icon to kind of know what I'm doing and when I upload so you can kind of be on top of things. So that's kind of all the business side stuff out of the way. I hope you enjoyed this video once again and lots of love to you, Miss Fittians, and I will see you next time.